Please do me a favor and don't screw this up. <laughs> hey there, friends. Topic of today is how to have peace of mind and a good quality of life when your physical capabilities are taken away from you. So that's what we're going to talk about. And before we do that, you're probably wondering, who's this handsome drink of water next to you, JP? I don't know if people say drinks of water anymore. But anyway, this is my good friend, Jator Pierre. His channel is Explore with Jator. You can check that out. I'll have a link below. But I've invited Jator on with me, one, because he's my friend and he does a lot of wise work with uh, clients in the mental emotional realm. And, but really the reason is he and I have both spent our fair share of time of being self-identified with our physical bodies, our own respectively, rather than each other's, which would be fine. I like your physical body, JP. Thank you. Uh, so with that said, uh, the reason why we're talking about this is there was a viewer sent me, uh, sent me a question uh, the background is, you know, JP, I, I had cancer a number of years ago, uh, uh, really messed up my, my leg, and I've had three subsequent knee surgeries. I'm in constant pain. My use of my legs is um, uh, significantly reduced. How can I have peace of mind and a good quality of life with my physical uh, capabilities uh, severely limited, handicapped? So let's dance with this. Um, Jator, I'm curious if we shine the spotlight on you. I'm curious what your thoughts are. Um, I guess one of my first thoughts is um, I just sent this text to a friend of mine the other day and was wondering, uh, could I be happy without the use of my legs? And what came up for me was um, a couple answers. One of those was no. Uh, I remember thinking about this question when I was younger, and uh, at that time in my life, I remember thinking I would rather die than not have the use of my legs. Um, I had so much identified with my body, so much identified with playing hockey, so much identified with lifting weights and, and being able to move and, and use my body, and uh, I think at this point in my life, what I've found is the tremendous amount that I've become, uh, that I was self-identified with my body and using that as a, as a place to start to find other things in my life that are serving me uh, at a higher level than my body simply served me, mm -hmm. to um, recognize the gifts that might be uh, present with not having the use of my legs. What what does that expand in my life? What other things does that open up? What other faculties do I start to pay attention to and see and feel? And um, almost like, uh, you know, Daredevil, for an example, loses the use of his eyes, but yet all of these other faculties mm -hmm. become accentuated and, and unharnessed and honed. Um, so for me, it would be uh, the exploration of life in a new way, which would still be very, very challenging. I, I can't even imagine what that would be like. Um, and uh, it'd be very challenging. Yeah. You know, I think part of the, the trauma, if you will, especially in an extreme situation where, you know, the legs are taken away from you so much that you, you can't walk, you're in extreme pain. Part of the trauma is the life situation is you, you can't meet your needs. You just can't meet your needs the way you used to. So it's a situation where we can drive ourselves absolutely crazy, resisting it, mm -hmm. continuing to try and meet our needs through kind of like the warrior archetype, playing mm -hmm. hockey, building a you know, strong body, whatever you were doing, drive yourself crazy trying to do that. Or I think the grace of acceptance in a situation like this, what I heard you Tor say is, if you go with the flow, even though the flow of life here, it almost, it seems cruel. That's my judgment of it. I mean, mm -hmm. if I had my faculties taken away, I'd be pissed off at life, at least for a while. So going with the flow of life, I think leads you, uh, has the potential to lead you 
to find new ways of uh, viewing life, viewing yourself, new ways of getting your needs met that are inevitably deeper inside of you. They're sourced from deeper within. I mean, our, our bodies are most superficial aspects of it, uh, of us. But if we go with the flow, we'll have no choice but to go deeper inside and start perceiving life through a lens that I think comes more from a place of wisdom rather than the youthful capabilities of being self-identified with a, our physical components. Um, yeah, and it would be challenging. Uh, just a quick example from my life, which I will absolutely confess, uh, compared to this lovely viewer's question, it doesn't compare, you know, what I, the physical losses that I've gone through. Long story short, I've had enough significant back injuries and knee injuries that I can't maintain a level of um, musculature that I once did. I remember being, I think, 10 years old when I honestly became obsessed. It was very obsessive compulsive of building my body up, getting my muscles big, uh, looking lean. It was really my way of making myself be strong, being somebody through a way that I could control so that I could disconnect from my out of control, like how I really felt about me inside. So anyway, after, I mean, 20 years of doing that, it was taken away. I tore the meniscus in my knee, my back, and, and trust me, I'm a slow learner. Anytime I've tried to rebound from those injuries and go back to lifting the amount of weight, volume of weight that I, I you know, needed to to build my body up, I just get re-injured. So for me, there has been certainly a grieving process as I, I lose my old sense of self that was very identified with the physical. And then there's maybe a wiser part of me that I'm beginning to get more in touch with and what that's teaching me is the, you know, my, my you know, mild loss of physical capabilities. It's really a matter of burning away who I'm not so that the realization of, who, of more of who I really am can arise. So there's, you know, a, a burning away of my muscle mass. And that's sad for a part of me. Part of me feels weak and worthless. And then there's another part of me that says... Wow, now I'm alive. Uh, now I'm much more connected with who I really am because my, th my skull is so thick. Uh, I don't think there was any way that I would have gotten in touch with my deeper, authentic resources, my inner wisdom rather than just my warrior archetype if I didn't have life, the serendipity of life kind of start to really limit my physical capacity which then gave me the the necessity, if you will, to wiggle my way deeper inside, to connect with the lens of life, perceiving life through the lens of more wisdom rather than the youthful warrior uh, mentality. Hmm. Yeah, um, what I heard you say, um, what I really appreciate, uh, which is a great reminder for me as well, is... Uh, bringing a, a flexibility to life, a malleability mm. to life, um, uh, an acceptance, and you know, and to feel all of that, to feel the, the grieving process, and to feel the anger, and to feel the, you know, f you universe, you know, what the fuck is going on? To feel that, and rather than to numb those feelings out, uh, to be present with them, and to be honest with them, and to embrace them, and on another note, to find the flexibility on the op opposite side of that, you know, what are the gifts that are here and tremendously hard to see and I can't even imagine what that would be like uh, to go through that. Uh, yet, I would invite myself in that, in that space to, okay, as I'm going through that process and feeling those feelings, to bring some balance to that would be, well, okay, what are the gifts here? What are what is the purpose here and to frame it in a way that uh, helps me find purpose mm -hmm. in it and helps me find a balance with my emotions and um, 
well, it helps me do that. <sighs> to take a breath and to uh, find some level of acceptance and surrender like we were talking about earlier, um, which would be tremendously challenging again, that I can't imagine. Um, yet, uh, I would invite myself in those moments to, to find the, the serendipity of it, um, not from numbing out my feelings, but to find the other side of, of what's going on. Yeah. Amen to that. Uh, what that means to me is like so many, if not all things, incredibly purposeful and growthful in life, it's got to be a struggle. Uh, if we pretend it would be easy, oh, yeah, look within and you know, connect with your heart. Oh, mm-hmm. Super easy to say, but an absolute struggle. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those struggles where, uh, you know, finding the new deeper authentic sense of self from which to identify with and perceive life from while you grieve the loss of what was. Um, We probably don't know where that is and how to do it until we're doing it. Much like a newborn colt, it doesn't know how to walk until it's walking. Uh, Yet the beauty, the grace of the messy struggle is it gets it to do what it knows how to do, but it doesn't know that it knows how to do it. And I think that's the case for all of us uh, uh, people who go through our challenges. I think our challenges are very synonymous with opportunities for growth. So with that said, lovely viewers out there, wish you well with your version of this struggle. And for the viewer writing in this question, Uh, Thank you so much, and thank you for letting us speak to it, honestly, from our limited capacity, mostly of knowledge, not wisdom. You're in your field of uh, experiential wisdom of uh, of it, so I'll be wishing you well. And uh, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, Feel free is my way of uh, demanding in a passive-aggressive way that you subscribe to my channel. And please feel free to check out Jator's channel. Again, link is in the description below. He's always exploring inner topics. Jator is weirder than I think I am. And I mean that as a sincere compliment. (laughs) I think weirdness is awesome. I think being normal is the absolute worst thing we could ever indict ourselves with. So, Jator, thank you for hanging out with us. Thanks for having me, brother. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Talk to you guys soon. You didn't screw that up too much. (laughs) 